vibrato, um, a thing that people are terrified of, absolutely terrified. Um, why do we do vibrato? It's to add expression, isn't it? And I think that the, the, the voice, if you hear anybody singing, there's a natural wobble in the voice that, that we call vibrato uh, that just adds expression. And I think as string players, we're, we're trying to imitate that natural expression. And so we've learned to, to add that little wobble to be more expressive, I think so. Yeah. yeah. It'll also make the, the sound a little bit bigger, I think, as well, isn't it? Yes, I think so. But it, it's... I think the between the wobble, it, it, the ear hears the middle of the note and it, it does something with the sound waves, something technical. Something technical. There you go. Uh, so there's different sorts of vibrato. Um, there's three basic ones. There's finger vibrato. I can't do that at all. I, I, oh, I don't know, my stiff joints, whatever. Um, I use wrist vibrato mostly um, and I will use arm vibrato, use my whole arm, particularly when I'm up the top. Um, but basically I'm a wrist girl. And that comes from... Where's the motion driven That's from coming your wrist? From there, from the wrist. And that gap between the hand bones and the arm bone. So what do you generally use? So I generally use arm vibrato. And that sort of is driven, I think, from my, from my elbow. Uh, and then the wrist and the fingers just follow. So the energy is coming from the elbow rather than the wrist. Yeah. yeah. What you need to remember with, with vibrato, though, is always the actual sound that you're going to hear is going to be what the fingertip is doing on the string. So whether you're doing it from the elbow, from the wrist, yeah. from the finger joint, um, you need to be thinking, actually, am I? how much am I moving the finger there? How wide am I moving it? Yeah. And how, how fast, fast. Or, fast or slow. And that's your colour palette. If you can change the width and you can change the speed, you have all the kind of colours of vibrato that you need. It's then a question of choosing when you want to do them. So I'm now going to show you my method of teaching wrist vibrato, and then you're going to show us your arm vibrato. Okay. So this is wrist vibrato. I want you to start by bringing your hand up 90 degrees to the floor. Relax your fingers, bend your thumb, let it touch your other fingers. So they're just keeping a nice shape there. And then you're going to wave. So you're going to go up and down like that. You're going to make sure you come up as well as down. Don't just go down. And you're going to keep a nice smooth rolling movement. Don't let the hand stop suddenly. Yeah. So there it is rolling. I then turn the hand on its side. And then up it comes. Now this movement, as you can see, is coming from this joint here. I can actually stick my finger in that joint um, and I can feel the bones creaking <laughs> as my hand, my hand moves like that, but my arm doesn't. My arm is not taking part in this, okay? So if you're ever sh not sure if you're doing wrist vibrato or not, stick your finger in that joint to check. Then if I put my violin up, I'm, then, I'm there doing this nice vibrato here, which is nowhere near the violin. Eventually I'm going to have to approach the violin, so along I come and at this point, I stick my thumb on the other side of the neck. Now I'm dusting pressure here. Imagine I'm cleaning my fingerboard. There's no friction, yeah, or hardly any. Um, I'm hearing this sort of swooshing noise as it goes up and down. I'm not pressing like that, yeah? So it's nice and relaxed. I then leave my thumb behind, still not pressing. It's just touching the side of the neck. My fingers, all four of them, are on there, dusting up and down. It's good to have all four there because it gets the hand angle correct. Then I'm going to start with just the second finger. So that's dusting up and down. And then I'm going to imagine there's a tiny bit of jam on the tip of my finger that's going to stop my finger moving. But my hand still wants to do the same position. So if we watch that from a different angle, there it is moving up and down. Note that I'm not reaching with my finger like that, yeah? It's keeping that shape, that curved shape. Up and down it goes, bit of jam on the tip of my finger, down it goes and rolls. Now, the movement is still coming from the wrist. It's a slightly different movement once you've got um, the finger stuck down. So don't worry that that's a slightly different movement. As long as it's still trying to come from there, that's what you want. So it slides and then it sticks and rolls. Great. And then I unstick it and let it slide again. There it is sliding up and down. I'm going to try a different finger now. So third finger sliding up and down, not reaching, not stretching, just sliding up and down and then stick and roll. There we go. And you practice doing all those fingers up and down, sticking and rolling and then releasing. Fourth finger is a bit weird. 
Mine's really short and stubby and it's a bit of a weird one. You do what works for you for your fourth finger. Um, practice it. Yeah, don't just wait until you have a big concert and then have a go. <laughs> um, my fourth finger vibrato is a mixture between finger and wrist. Um, so actually, there I am sliding up and down, but when I actually stick and roll it, there's a bit of a twist going on in the finger there as well. But, you know, you do what you can. But essentially, it'll as long as it sounds good, it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. So you just have to sort of think, what does my little finger look like? OK, there you go. And then the first finger, when you do that one, when you stick and roll that one, it's going to come down slightly different angle, more backwards um, than the second and third finger. Don't worry that that's a slightly different angle. That's quite normal. Then we get the bow. So now we're actually going to hear what we're doing, which is a very exciting moment. Um, I like to think of vibrato as oscillations. Um, so any physicists out there will tell me this is not the picture of a sound wave, so I do apologise. But if you can imagine in your head a sound wave going up and down and up and down, and there's a centre line, isn't there? You know, if you see it on, on one of those medical dramas, <laughs> you've got the centre line and you've got the little graph going up and below, up and below. So when you're doing vibrato, think of having your hand in a central position and then it's rolling forward and backwards, up and below, forward and backwards, yeah? Now, one oscillation will be from the middle, from the center point, forward, backwards and back to the middle again. That's one oscillation. And you start by doing one oscillation for one bow. It's really slow, okay? So imagine this. OK, so I've done one bow and I've done one oscillation. Then I'm going to do two oscillations for one bow. OK, and then three. And then you do four, six, eight. You can go up to 16, 32 for a kind of Disneyland vibrato, very exciting. Um, and you want to do that without stopping the bow. So you're going to keep the bow moving at a completely constant speed, and then you're going to keep increasing the number of oscillations. So it looks like this. You can vary the width as well. So you're wanting to think of a tiny, tiny distance that you're going forward and backwards over that neutral line and then a really big wide one. So you can practice altering those. Um, so here I am doing a slow, narrow vibrato. Then I'm gonna speed it up, but I'm not going to change the, um, the narrowness of it, the width of it, yeah? So it's gonna be fast, but still narrow. Yeah, then I can try wide. And then I can do wide and fast. Yeah, and you can alter these. You just keep, you know, make yourself a little uh, tombola with sort of wide and narrow and fast and slow and all these different things and keep making different combinations. Challenge yourself to be able to do the different combinations and then start to change them while you're practicing. So you start narrow, you get wider, but you're keeping the same speed or perhaps you speed up in the middle of it. Being able to change this as you go through music, go through a piece is a really amazing thing. So you're going to grow through a note with your vibrato. So, um... Yeah, you can have a lovely phrasing there. It doesn't have to all be down to the bow. You can have your left hand taking part as well. Good luck. So Nicole's shown us about her lovely wrist vibrato. Um, when I'm teaching vibrato, I probably start off exactly the same way. They're just lovely ideas. Keeping it loose, I think, is the most important thing. So only, only an extra suggestion, if you want to extend that a little bit, is that I start at doing all of those things in third position a little bit, just so you've got a little bit more support. Some people are able to do it straight away from sort of second, first position. If you're finding it a little bit more difficult, third position here, you've got a little bit more support. Um, and when you're doing those wobbles, the oscillations, as Nicole called them, 
It's fantastic. You can put a metronome on because I think the most important thing about vibrato is that you are controlling it, not it is controlling you. You are in control. Sometimes you may not want to use vibrato. So one note, you may take it out altogether. That's the sound you want. Sometimes you want a fast vibrato, sometimes you want a slow vibrato, but you are in control of that. So metronome, crotch equals 60, four clicks. And we're going to do our oscillation, as Nicole has said. So. Four in a bow and back the other way. And you can see I'm anchored here, so I'm doing a really good wrist vibrato, similar to Nicole's version down here. Uh, then you can up it to a triplet. So that's three notes to every click. And, and then a semiquaver. Semiquaver, that's four notes on every click. And that way, you're gradually developing a rhythmic vibrato so that you can really control the speed um, however you like. So then moving to a, an arm vibrato. So for wrist vibrato, it's, it's, it's driven from here. This is where the main movement is. Um, for arm vibrato, it just engages a little bit more here. So if you imagine you're at school, I've got a desk sitting at the table, at the dinner table. My kids have always got their arms on the table, the elbow on the table. Uh huh. So, and relax. When you're like that, this is my table. Your, your wrist just flops. It's just, you're just relaxed. Or you've got it on your hip, you know, and you're looking at your fingernails, you know, girls at school like that. So this wrist is, is not engaged here. It's basically, it's your elbow and everything else just flops. And then if you just start to rock from your elbow, whether you can see that, your hand just goes with the motion, a little bit like sort of seaweed on the, and so this is anchored on the seabed and everything else just goes with the current. So elbow moves and wrist just goes with it. And as a result, finger just goes with it as well. So that's, that's the thoughts behind moving towards arm vibrato. And then when you get onto the violin, we move from our here where the movement is from here, just release it and feel that the movement's coming from the elbow here. Whether you can see that. So, but the, the main thing is that you're in control. <laughs>